Welcome to this week's episode of the podcast. I'm here with Phil Holloway, the gaffer from 100% LCFC. Um, <laughs> he's had a bit of a rant about Leicester, manager, Pule, Brendan Rogers. the list goes on. Uh, Phil, how are you? I'm good, how are you? <laughs> it's, been, it's been a bit of a mad week with the result at Palace at Selhurst Park, 1-0. What's your take on the game itself? I, I don't think the game was... Well, uh, possession-wise, we had more possession. We had more uh, shots on target, more shots, uh, better completion of pass rate. So all the stats were in Leicester's favour. Obviously, the only stat that matters was that they scored from their one shot on target they scored, uh, and we lost 1-0. So that, that's really the only stat. But you could see from a manager's point of view why he would say, actually, it wasn't, wasn't a bad performance, just the result didn't go for us. But it, it was a bit turgid and boring to watch at times, Lee, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, I, I, unfortunately, I didn't watch the full match, but I watched in, in bits and bobs and I watched Match of the Day, which was hardly worth watching a Match of the Day, to be honest. Um, I noticed, obviously, with the Vardy uh, missing that chance, I think it, that was it for us, really. Well, he had that penalty. Well, was it a penalty or was it a foul in the first half where Vardy, it was a bit of a shoulder-to-shoulder. You, you uh, know, and they disallowed that goal. Yeah. And I think probably fair enough, I think Vardy just probably got a little bit too much on the keeper and did foul him. Uh, and then in the second half, just, I mean, it's, it's the look of how it goes some days, isn't it, where Vardy, the keeper makes a decent save, pushes it onto the post, and then it flies straight back out, it uh, plays straight back into the keeper's arms instead of to Jamie Vardy. So, <laughs> you know, if you're if you Claude Puel, you're, you're probably pulling your hair out at things like that when, when you see the backlash from fans after the match. Yeah. I, I, to, you know what? It's not been great under Puel for uh, quite a few games now. Uh, it's, it's, it's a bit of a bore fest in terms of goals for, for games as well. What are we on? Eight goals in 11 games or something now. It's, it is starting to get a bit like... OK, this is not looking great. But I'm going to back the club. If the pl- club's decision is to keep Pule in till the end of the season, then you back the. You, I'm backing the club all the way. I'm not Pule out, I'm not Pule in, but in the summer, I would prefer him to go and, and start afresh, to be honest, new season with a new manager. But that's my take. Everyone's got their own opinion, it seems, on Twitter especially. Uh, I've been in some debates with all sorts of different fans. Um, at the end of the day, we've all got an opinion and... Uh, and no one's right. No one's right, apart from the pe- the person in charge. Uh, Lee, absolutely. I mean, after the match, I, I was debating in my own head whether we should even run a poll. So many fans were saying, do a poll, do a poll, pull in, pull out poll. And I, I, for the last week, I've been saying, no, we don't we don't need to stir the pot and have a poll like that. But after the, the defeat on Saturday, I, I did a quick live video and everybody was saying, do the poll. So I was like, all right, look, if that's what the fans want, that's... That's what 100% LCFC is. It's with the, with the fan yeah. zone to debate it. So I put the poll up there thinking, well, a bit a bit like Brexit, Lee, it's going to be 50-50. You know, <laughs> we can't come to a conclusion. But boy, oh boy, it was anything but 50-50. I think last time I looked, the poll's still live. It was something like 88% of Leicester City fans who voted. And we had over 2,500 votes so far last time I looked. 88% want pure yeah, out. Yeah, 88%. So our, I'm now in the vast minority because I'm still one of the 12% going, look, you know, as a Leicester fan long term, we're four points off six. It's yeah. Christmas nearly. We're four points off six position. But it's, all, it's, it's almost like what the Leicester fans really want, you know. It's, it, Leicester's, you know, last 20 years history, you know, league positions and now look where we are. You know, um, 11 seasons we've not been in the in the top. And, and, and now we are, you know, like you said, we're four points off six. Uh, we're, we're again in the quarterfinals of a cup. I don't know. Maybe I think winning that Premier League really has tainted the expectations of fans for Leicester City. Well, it was literally 10 years ago, Lee, which I know it starts to be 10 years ago, but 10 years ago, so in 2008 to 2009, we were in League One, <sighs> Lee. We were playing Yeovil away. I know. We were entertaining Doncaster at home. We were playing Brentford. I you know, know. that we're, was 10 we're, years we're, ago. We're and since then, we've won. Matty Fryer, we've... Matty Fryer yes. banging in the goals. Yeah, you know, I mean, <laughs> the thing is, the thing is, I know the owners have come in and, and really have kept, put a rocket up Leicester's backside, which is great. And they are building. They are building for the future, but building in a nice, steady way. They're, yeah, yeah. I said expanding this. Expanding the ground. Training facilities yeah. are looking space age. Yeah. You know, and Claude Puel, 
I'm not. I'm not his biggest fan. It sounds like I'm, no. I certainly am not his biggest fan. But he's he's by he's generally trying to build a team of younger players that could be around for Leicester for three, four, five, six years if we can hang on to them. Though now you're just going on about pure, but uh, it seems like the predicament that we're now in with the fans going against him and his style and his uh, his mid-table finishes and he's he's just his boring sense of, of football <laughs> sorry it, um it, it, it's it seems like it's a pattern because leon fans were saying the same thing and and, and so was southampton if you look back you can easily search Puel and you know his former team and you'll see it's the same thing the articles the fans that they all say the same thing that now leicester fans are I don't, I don't know what the answer is for Puel himself because it's clearly that's his his idea is to build a team slowly, like you said, uh, and I think he is doing that with the players that we've now brought in. You know, a few years ago you would have never have seen Chowdhury get a, a start or Madison. I don't even think Madison would have been part of the squad a few years back with say Ranieri or Pearson in charge. Um, so he's, he is, in terms of building, like you said, I think he's, he's got a plan, but I think it's a very slow one. And I don't think Leicester fans want a slow plan. I think they want a quick fix into Europe. The thing is, Lee, like under, you go back, you mentioned Claudio Ranieri there. It's like Claudio, that season we had with Cla one season just over and a half with Claudio Ranieri was just, it was like going out with an A-grade supermodel for a year or so, wasn't it? He he was funny, he was energetic, he was dilly dong, dilly dang. You know, uh, every song. How many songs? I've never known us make so many songs about a manager and a yeah. team in that year. Yeah. We went to Europe with him. We won the Premier League. Ranieri was so. Oh, we love him, don't we? we? Literally loved him. And then it's like I say, you're going out with an A-grade supermodel, world beater. And then suddenly you, you've ended up, you're scratching your head and you're going, how have we ended up with uh, yeah, Claude, Claude Puel, who's not I very know. exciting. He's but, dull in his interviews, bless him, and he's dull to watch, he's dull to listen to. I watched him on Match of the Day, like you, Lee, afterwards. Um, and uh, and, um, and I, uh, uh, I forgot, I was watching him and I forgot to listen to what he was saying because it was that slow and that boring. <laughs> I just, and then I suddenly went, I was like drifting off into space. <laughs> Oh mate, I, I know, so, and, and and that's the problem. He don't just bring that off the pitch; he brings it on as well, doesn't he? I, I just, I, I've said it before, Lee. I said it a bit about Nigel Pearson. These guys now, that what they have to, for me, what they have to realise is that um, Claude Puel, yes, he, he might be a pretty good tactician and he might be able to coach, but he's, one of his biggest roles is to be a media personality, whether that's in front of the TV cameras or whether that's on a match day. What fans want to see is somebody jumping up and down the line. You remember Martin O'Neill, oh, mate, Claudio the Ranieri. Passion's I'm unreal. not being funny. He just needs a bit of coaching to say, right, when when we need passion, <laughs> you jump up and down the touchline. When we're losing, you turn around to the crowd and you go, come on, come I on. Know. That's it's basically. I know, I know. You, just the do thing it. is, you, you Google the word pure and you click on <laughs> images, and it's all of him going like this. What, like? Yeah, like. <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm. I know, I know, I know boring, what you're saying. But, um, but and, we're four points off sickly. Listen, I'm the quarterfinals. I, I know, I know. It, it's 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 like this. It, it's either you want some sort of finesse style, you know, with the football, with the results, or you you sit on the fence and be happy with where we are. I, I'm in between. I'm in between. I can't decide what I want myself. Um, I've been called deluded for saying hang on till the summer. <laughs> But I'm not. I'm not deluded. We freaking we're in the top ten practically. <laughs> quarterfinals. We could be. We could still potentially take the back door into Europe. I'm not saying we will. By the way, <laughs> listen, Lee. For me, the Man City game last year was massive, and he screwed that up by picking the wrong team. When we play Man City in the quarterfinals of the cup, he has to pick the best team we have to beat them. Yeah, I agree. And if he doesn't, I think that that could be my tipping point where I would go, come on, that's mid table is one thing that I'm not, you know, I'd like higher, but pick a B team against Man City because Man City will play a B team tomorrow. Do you really they think won't they will? Be fussed. Of course they will. They're in the Champions League last 16. They're gunning. They're in second position. Pep Guardiola yeah, will chasing. not be happy that Liverpool are top. They want to win the Premier League. They want to win the Champions League. League Cup. 
you know, it's the fourth level cup for them. For us, it's probably our best it's, chance of getting anything this year and Europe. Yeah, I it's think no in terms of what you just said, I think it's our best chance to win the League Cup again for, for quite some time. Absolutely. Definitely. Um, I just want to nitpick something that Harry Maguire said. Uh, he said that everyone is disappointed from the weekend. We have worked tirelessly all week trying to put on a good performance this week and the first 20 minutes we started pretty slow. There was not really any tempo from either team. They probably edged the first 20 minutes, but apart from the first 20 minutes, I would say we were the better team in control of the game. Later they scored when we were playing our best football in our first spell of pressure. To be fair to the lad, it's a great strike, a great finish. We'll look back and we'll have to work hard. In the second half, we huffed and puffed. But like I said, again, we were probably the better team in their half. For the majority of it, creating chances was limited. Obviously, Vars had a great chance and it was great save from the goalkeeper with a fortunate little bit of luck. Um, it's just disappointing to lose the game. It was down to fine margins throughout the day and there wasn't too much between the teams. That's from a player himself. I th well, I think that's that's about right, isn't it? What he said. It was fine lines. They had one shot on target, and it was a pretty cracking shot. Smichael didn't have much chance. It went right into the side of the corner of the goal. Mendy came out to block. I've heard some people moan at Mendy. Oh, Crocky, when he saw what was happening, he came out to try and block it. Could have been a bit faster, maybe. But, you know, in the end... Sometimes you have to say the other team scored a bloody good goal. Yeah. And when we had our couple yeah. of chances, I'm not being funny, they had a guy score from 20 odd yards, 22 yards, whatever it was. And Diddy had a great chance. Demari Gray had a great chance. And they both, I don't know if you saw Demari Gray's no. chance today, but he was, he was 20 yards out. It sat perfectly for him and it finished 10 yards high and 10 yards wide. And you go, somebody, somebody who's on the money that that young lad's on should be hitting the target. Yeah, yeah. Um, Going back just to losing on good goals, yeah, I, I totally agree. You know, at the end of the day, if you lose one nil and it's a fantastic goal from a, from the opposing team, there's nothing you can really do about it. You can't, you you can't moan. I mean, I know defen <laughs> defensively you can probably say this and probably say that, but if it's a flipping great goal, what about that goal down here, uh, Everton? It was it uh, Sigerson goal? That was that was. <laughs> I think, Lee, some of the fans' frustration, some of my frustration is we've got Jamie Vardy who was looking back to good form, good fitness on Saturday. And the trouble is we don't play. For me, I'd build the side around Jamie Vardy scoring goals. Yeah. And we, we don't. We play a different style. We, we, tr we play like, you know when Vardy's played for England and yes. had no success? It's yes. because we play slow, slow, grabbing yeah. around football. And then by the time the ball gets anywhere near Vardy, He's surrounded by defenders, and that's not his game. His game is quick ball through the channel or over the top and let him run onto it. And if you don't play that ball at all in 95 minutes, you're effectively taking out your star striker. Yeah. And that's the fans' frustration, I think. I was, I was masking the same sort of thing that you said about the, um, the Jamie Vardy play style at the moment. It's almost like we're copying uh, his England performances. Yeah, um, where he doesn't That's get doesn't him. get the ball, and he and he looks completely a different player. Um, I'm, I am slightly worried about Vards at the minute. He's thirty two, and you know things are going to change for him. His pace, his game style is going to have to change. But he's still got it, Lee. Though at the moment, he's still got the pace. He's got the energy. He's got the he's got the finishing. But if you're not playing to him, he'll get frustrated with it. He'll he'll want to be off. <sighs> yeah. Uh, we don't somebody, need that. We don't need that no. right now. Put it that way. Well, that, that's one player the, we can. We've got to keep hold of is Jamie Vardy. I think. I agree. And there's more rumours of some of the young lads like Chilwell and Maguire going, isn't there? Yeah, than, Man City. Than, and, but this is what and I say, Pules, yeah. Pules building a side for the future. You can't let Harry Maguire go. You can't let Ben Chilwell and Jay, James Madison go. The, the, this is the future. So. Yeah. Um, just moving on to the Man City game for tomorrow. Uh, obviously, you're going to take it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, be yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I, I can't make it tomorrow, so I'm I'm hopefully going to be able to to watch it somehow. <laughs> That's as far as I'll say. Um, wh what's your what what is your predictions going in? Uh, do you think Pure's going to use a full squad? Um, because I I can't see why not. To be honest, That's what we're playing for, right? Uh, for me, it's it's just it's blindingly obvious that uh, Pure has to put out his his strongest eleven. That's it. Just everybody from start, from Casper in goal to Jamie Vardy up top, you know, just got to have a best 11 out there who's fit. Um, 
because Man City, I just leave. They won't play their full A side. They will put in. Don't get me wrong. Their B side. It's probably as good the, as the our first guys, team. You know, the, they, the, the weekend they had Jesus up front and they had Aguero not on the pitch. So frightening, you know, isn't it? It is frightening. So their, their B side is still going to be good, but you know, A side of Leicester at the King Power w- with a lot of noise in a cup quarter final with a semi final at stake. It, it's going to be exciting. It should be. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say in terms of predictions because I, 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 I don't want to say this, but I can see Riyad Mahrez playing and scoring a goal, to be honest. Well, we play Man City at home twice in effectively eight days, don't we? Because we play them on uh, Boxing Day as well. I'm right yeah, with that, I think, that... can't I? Well, you know, Lee, you know Riyad Mahrez is going to score... He's going to cut in from the left Dumb. and whip, whip a curling 25-yarder oh. into the top corner. Is he going to get booed, by the way? Well, I, I hope not because, I just again, when you're looking at Leicester City's history and the last 20 years, the last 138, 40 years, whatever it is, Riyad Mahrez was part of the dream team of Leicester yeah. City. Yeah. And it was him and Jamie Vardy's goals and Mahrez's assists and goals that won us that dream. So... Any Leicester fan who boos Riyad Mahrez, I just do not understand it. That, again, Lee, it's going to happen, having... I think. It's going to happen. Oh. Really? It's You're going to boo happen. a player who won us the league? It's going to happen. I'm telling you now it's going to happen. I don't know what to say, Lee, because if, if a fan wants to boo... There's, I can't think of many ex-Leicester players I'd ever boo anyway. Crikey, if Jeff Schlupp came back, I'd give him a clap. <laughs> you know... And Anthony Knockhart comes back and we sing... Anthony yeah. Knockhart comes back for Brighton and we all sing Don't Sell yeah. Knockhart. Yeah, Don't Sell Knockhart, Anthony but Knockhart. effectively won nothing with us, apart from the fact that I'll always remember Knockhart at Forest away in the against Forest. But Riyad Mahrez is yeah. a league winner and amazing. Yeah. Yeah, he, look, he looks the part now at Man City with the help starting, of... His... He's starting to, isn't he? Yeah. Really come into that team. OK, Phil. Well, thanks for your take today. And... Uh... Make sure you listen to us on SoundCloud and on iTunes. Uh, We're also out on Facebook and on YouTube as well. And basically subscribe and help and share and like this video as well. Uh, Thanks for our sponsors, Peter's Pizzeria, ADT Taxes, Everard's Tiger, The Fox's Arms in Alcudia and Loserpool as well. Uh, And thanks, Phil, for coming on. Do I, mate? (laughs) (laughs) I hope you enjoyed tomorrow night. And uh, hopefully... We can get a cheeky win. I don't think so. I think so. Come on, Lester. (laughs) Come on, Lee. Back the foxes. (laughs) Cheers. I'm Lee Chapman. Give me a follow at Lee underscore Chappy. You can follow Phil at... 100 LCFC. Or do you want to put your personal in or not? No. No? Okay. Follow 100% LCFC. (laughs) 100 LCFC then. Cheers, Phil. See you, Lee. See you, mate. Make sure you follow us at 100LCFC on Twitter and on Facebook and give me a follow at Lee underscore Chappie. This podcast is brought to you by our sponsors at ADT Taxes. Download the app today. And finally, visit Loserpool. Loserpool Loserpool.com. Place a bet on a losing team in the Premier League. If they lose, you advance into the next stage. The last man standing is declared the winner. Win a £1,000 guaranteed. Visit Loserpool.com.